Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm gonna to react to six lies that America told me about Europe. Now, this should be interesting because I believe that this video was made by an expat. So someone born and raised in America that now works uh, within Europe. And it's gonna be him sharing his experiences about, I'm guessing, preconceptions that he must have had about Europe prior to moving here. So it's gonna be interesting to see what his experiences are. I'm hoping he's gonna be completely honest. I'm sure he will be. And just kind of, you know, lay bare like his, I don't wanna say prejudices, but like, we'll just say misconceptions about Europe. So yeah, this should be interesting. So let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back. International Carl doing another video for you. If this is your first time to my channel, please right now stop and hit the, the like button. button consider subscribing and as always hit me in the comment section because those that have subscribed to my channel know that I'm always active in the comment section. Now this video we're going to talk about a couple lies that the United States pushes into us as Americans growing up. And mm. Let's talk about it right now. Let's get to it right now. Lie number one. This one is a funny one to me because in the United States it's always I don't care if you're a de Democrat I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're independent. I don't care where you're at on the political spectrum. You're always going to have a politician telling you that they hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. That's right. They hate us for our freedoms. Can you believe that? As if nowhere else in the world has any freedom like Europe. You know, in Europe, they act like, you know, they act like if you come to Europe, there's just no freedoms. What freedoms do I not have here in Europe? You know, as these are- This is an interesting one. I, I don't think that Bush was probably referring to Europe when he was saying that. He's probably referring to America's enemies, I would guess. Are Western democracies with Western values and culture that has been exported to the United States and it's become its own thing. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but freedoms exist here. I'm still trying to, I'm still scratching my head. What freedom do you have in America that I don't have here? Let's talk about freedom of speech, for example. In America, you have freedom of speech. In the UK, for example, you don't have freedom of speech. What you do have is freedom of expression. Mm. Slight different tweak, but let's give you an example. In America, you can be as racist as you want to somebody. You can walk up to me, walk up to any black person and say the N-word all day long if you want. <laughs> when you oh can't you really couldn't do that. Because at some point you will cross a fine line of inciting racial hatred. So if you define your freedoms based on your ability to call somebody an N-word or call some uh, Asian American some type of offensive word, by all means, you can have that freedom. I don't need that freedom. Hold on. So in America, if someone was just to follow you around the street, you know, like me, like calling me the N word, is that not at some point, you know, verbal assault? Can they just literally say that, you know, till the cows come home? If so, that's, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. But other people in America talk about it like freedom for guns. Ooh, guns, guns, guns. They want to take your guns. Well, let's see. Here in the UK, can you have guns? Yes. Can you have a rifle? Mm. Yes. Can you have a handgun? Yes. Yeah, what does the Second a, Amendment say in the United States? You just need a special uh, license for them. It has to be, it's highly... It's very hard to get it though. And usually it's only like farmers that, that have that license. Regulated. So what is it here in the UK? Guess what? It's highly regulated. There's lots of regulations around what type of gun, where you have to store that gun, where you have to keep the ammunition, what do you have to do for the maintenance of that gun, highly regulated. So you still have the freedom to have a gun. So if you define your freedoms as being able to have as many guns as you want in America, okay, fine, no argument, but I think that's a lie that they sell that nobody here has any guns. Not true. Mm. Number two, social housing is a bad thing. It's something that you're supposed to segregate one. from the rest of the population. So, for example, in America, especially in L.A. where I'm from or Southern California where I'm from, social housing, Section 8. Well, that's usually in 
a separate side of the city, not being seen. I don't even know where it's at because where I grew up was nothing but beautiful homes, single family homes, no social housing. Where here in the UK, just in Europe in general, it's all sprinkled around you. For example, here in the UK, I live in a beautiful big house, beautiful executive style estate. I have a nice car, but guess what? On this estate and on several new estates, they all have social housing and they do things that are different in the United States or that they do here in the UK that they wouldn't do or they don't do in the United States. You could be on social housing, but guess what? You can partially own that house. So that way you can be on the track. So you can buy 10% of the home, 20% of the home, 50% of the home, and try to get all the way up to 100% of the home like, like me or you do. So that's a different strategy that they do so that social housing is good for everybody because that way the kids get to interact with all people from yeah. all social and religious economic backgrounds. Yeah. And you as an adult get to work and meet and mingle with people from all different backgrounds. I think the neighborhoods are better for it. They're safer for it. Less crime. Because guess what? If you're in an executive style estate, well, guess what? You want to keep your home value high. You want to keep it nice and looking new. And that's going to put pressure on the social housing to also keep their house nice. Keep the estate looking nice and new and fresh. So I think that's a myth, and I think that's something that should be revisited in the United States. Number? He makes a really interesting point about the social mobility. I do think, you know, going to school, like with uh, kids from wealthy uh, backgrounds and stuff, and you can learn things from each other, you know, and you build friendships and bonds. And I think it just it's a, a better way of bringing people together, I think. Three. In America, they teach you this that somehow being a hard worker means coming in early, staying late, never taking a vacation, and definitely don't call in sick. That is like the biggest mistake you could ever make, faux pas you can make. I'll give you an example. When I was working for a large airframe manufacturer in the United States, I remember a friend of mine, we wanted to take two weeks off and go do something. Our managers looked at us like we were crazy because we wow. wanted to have the audacity to take two weeks off. And mind you, we didn't have we didn't take any days off prior to that. We just wanted to take two weeks off in a year so we could go do something. They were like, no. Whoa. Reject it. Slim that down to a week. And I'm thinking, isn't that my time off to relax, to recharge my battery so I can come back to work? Mm -hmm. No. Now I think minds and hearts have changed a little bit in the United States back from when I started working, back in the early 2000s, or mid 2000s, I should say. But that was a faux pas. Well, here in the United Kingdom and here in Europe, for example, it's encouraged to take time off. You get 20, 25 plus days off in mostly all European countries. I think by law in, in the European Union, you have to have 20 days off. So it's encouraged to take time off because either you use it or you lose it. And for example, I think Sweden, if I can find the article, it's on the screen now. But if not, Sweden is actually doing a trial where they're reducing the work hours yeah. to six hours to see if it increases productivity. Because employees, employers are seeing that the employees are more rested and more focused when they come back to work. No. A lot of places here in the UK are actually trialing a four day week. I think I heard it happening in, in the US as well. And from what I've heard, it's uh, it's been the results have been promising because people are the productivity is the same. You know, people are still getting the work done, but they just feel a lot more invigorated when they come back from work, uh, um, come back from the weekend, the three day weekend. Number four, America sells you this that capitalism and consumerism go hand in glove. It's like this cycle: you have to work to buy to work again, to pay for what you buy, to buy some more stuff, to then work again and go down this continuous loop of working to live. And in Europe, one of the things that I find I think is a, is a beauty and a benefit of working and living in Europe is that there's more of a work-life balance. As I just talked about in point number three, is that you have time off to actually do stuff and you don't just have this endless working to consume. Don't get me wrong, we go on vacation, so we're consuming what I would call um, 
we are consuming experiences, mm. but we, we are not, we don't live to work. We work to live. And that is a benefit of living in Europe. And I think that is great. And I think the U.S. sells a lie to its people by telling them that you have to work hard to then buy stuff. Do you guys agree with his point here? Like, is it really uh, pushed on you guys to, to buy stuff all the time? Like, is it as, you know, is it really that aggressive, the marketing and the commercials and stuff like that? Like, let me know what you think. And never do anything. Number five, which kind of ties into the first one I said, but it really is on the Republican right side in America. They always preach, especially during the Obamacare era, 2012, was all about these death panels. They literally produced a video where they were throwing grandma off a cliff because of social what? medicine. Make no mistake about it. President Obama and the keeping them honest healthcare hype. The Democrats who supported Obamacare began throwing seniors off the cliff back. The evils of social medicine that you were going to have to have <laughs> death panels if you got sick. I mean, how ridiculous of a lie that is. I mean, it's a bold faced lie. I've lived here 11, 12 years. I have yet to ever see a death panel. I have but known some older people. Panel? I know some younger people. I know myself. You can walk into any hospital in any country in Europe and there's not a single death panel. What do you What's a death panel? What is that? I expect them to say, oh, sorry, you had a heart attack last year, Mr. Carl. But um, since you had one last year, we're not going to treat you for this heart attack because the panel has refused your care. Oh, okay. Note, you kind of already have that in America. You just have it through the insurance companies because guess what they do? Decide not to cover you. They say, it's a pre-existing condition. I don't think you can do that anymore, but they'll say that. Or they'll find a way to deny coverage. They'll make it so high to cost to do it that you have to do it out of pocket. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Now you're bankrupt. So that loops right back to number one. How are you free if you have to live with the pressure of going bankrupt it, and not being able to pay your bills because guess what? You have the audacity to break your hip, get sick. I don't know, you pick it. So those are the five things that I think that the United States lies or misleads its people on purpose to further whatever big business or whatever political agenda that they have to the people. I'm gonna leave you with a bonus one which is kind of strange if you look at it. Because number six is this. In America, every day, all students around the nation get up oh, every morning right. and say the Pledge of, of Allegiance. Allegiance. <laughs> you pledge yourself and align yourself to the United States flag and to the republic for which it stands. Now, that's not something that's common in Europe. In many Western countries, I don't know of any other Western country that makes its kids get up every morning. Yeah, I watched a video about this one before. Um, I don't think there's any other country that I can think of. Um, ah, yeah, in the video, apparently it's uh, North Korea. North Korea is the, uh, the only other place, I think. <laughs> I do know of one back in 1938, 1942-ish time. Those kids used to get up and actually pledge allegiance to their flag and to their Fuhrer. Mm. But I don't know if that's something we should necessarily be doing. Don't get me wrong, I love my country. I'm very patriotic about it. I love the 4th of July for all it's, my country is never perfect, but I think it can get better. But that's mine. Hit me in the comments. Tell Very me what you interesting. think. Fascinating video. I can tell that, you know, he he's really enjoying his time in, in the UK. And I'm glad to, to, to hear that and see that. Um, it's a tough one because I think um, the things that he's saying, there's probably a lot of you guys watching this video and you think that there may be, you know, nothing wrong with that or anything like that. And it's hard for me to say that it's wrong 
because I've never lived in the US, so it, it would be unfair of me to, to pass judgment. Um, I would love if, you know, we could do some kind of swap where we take 100 people from the US, 100 from the UK and swap them around and just expose them to, you know, the different cultures, way of life of the place that they are in at that moment and just see what their thoughts are at the end. I'm gonna see if there's anything like that on YouTube. There probably is. I think it'd be an interesting uh, social experiment. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.